Welcome back to Retro Rebound. In today's video, we are going back to the Nintendo Switch because we're going forward to the Nintendo Switch successor with some really exciting news that was announced that has major implications for those of you who are collecting Nintendo Switch games, you're sizing up your backlog, you're wondering if these games are going to inflate in prices. Will Nintendo Switch's successor have some sort of backwards compatibility? That's going to determine a lot of pricing, a lot of should I wait or should I just play it now and bite the bullet? And Nintendo has made a massive announcement that is going to change a lot of our approach approaches to game collecting for the Switch, and I am so excited about it if everything pans out how we're hoping it will. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a different spirited Retro Rebound video. Normally we're talking about a game or a piece of hardware, and in a sense we still are. I have a stack of games next to me that I want to talk about for Nintendo Switch 2 backwards compatibility, but ladies and gentlemen, it is a bit different from what we typically do since it includes more modern gaming news. So thank you for obliging me here in this upload because I am very excited about the news and I think a lot of collectors out there should be as well. So we're going to get into the announcement here from Nintendo and I'm going to offer some thoughts right afterwards because they post on their official account. This is Furukawa. I like the idea that he like opened up Twitter and just fired this one out real quick. At today's corporate management policy briefing, we announced that Nintendo Switch software will also be playable on the successor to Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch Online will be available on the successor to Nintendo Switch as well. Further information about the successor to Nintendo Switch, including its compatibility with Nintendo Switch, will be announced at a later date. I follow some Nintendo YouTubers. This has just been like a hotly debated topic. Will they do it? Will they not? And the reason I was kind of leaning in the camp of they might not do it is because Nintendo has greatly benefited from just leaving out back compat for many generations. And you saw it with the Nintendo Switch, how much they benefited from reselling us all GameCube games that many of us happily bought over and over again. Like there was no question marks for really any of us when Metroid Prime Remastered show up. We went, oh yeah, of course, like I'm going to buy this again. And Nintendo just found a pot of gold in that, that I thought they realized, hmm, back compat is great and all to sell the system. But when it comes to selling software and making a lot of money on big releases, we don't really have to go back to the drawing board and make brand new experiences, we can just resell old ones, and why would they let that go as you get further and further away from the Switch? You could do that just like they did with the Wii U into the Nintendo Switch. Now granted, there was a better reason there. The Switch was starting off hot, there was a lot of units sold, and so what they wanted to do was bring those games that people skipped out on that were very good, like a Bayonetta 2, over to Nintendo Switch and say, hey, like, try it again. Since you kind of like this hardware here, you're probably going to actually want to play this. And so month after month, Nintendo had a brand new game on Nintendo Switch from when it released all the way to the end of the year. And it was one of the best starts to a generation I've personally ever experienced as a gamer. There was always something to look forward to on my Switch. But the good news is with Switch 2, we can now look forward to playing older games on it. And I'll get into what exactly that can mean for the library. But also, I wanted to address Switch Online being here on the Switch successor likely means that there is not going to be some sort of virtual console on the Switch successor. As much as I would love for this to happen and buy and own my games digitally a la carte like we did back on, say, the Wii, I think Nintendo makes too much money off of this recurrent subscription service. And also, for 20 bucks a year, you're actually getting a pretty good deal at this point. I was a massive critic of the Switch subscription service. I still am because at the end of the day, you're not really owning anything. You're renting all these games from their subscription service. But if you don't care about that stuff and you're not like us here on Retro Rebound where we like to buy and own these games, then I can see the value there. I can understand and respect it. And I can also see why Nintendo wouldn't want to walk away from recurrent spending from their customers, especially when it's such forget it money when you look at other annual subscriptions out there. So with that all out of the way, the reason I'm really excited about this news, the reason I wanted to talk about it is because I have a stack of Switch games that I have been waiting to play because I have not been able to tolerate them much on Nintendo Switch. And the idea of a successor, just even providing the simplest thing, like better frame rates and slightly better resolution would do so much for some of these games. Many people I think have dreamt up in their heads this idea that like the Switch successor is gonna come out and all these games are gonna basically get full on next gen updates and, and maybe they do and I would be over the moon about that. But I'm keeping my expectations in a reasonable Nintendo zone here of just, hey, they might run a little better and look a little better thanks to back compat. Like if I were to draw a comparable, think FPS boost for Xbox. Anyway, 
here's just some games that I have in my collection that I'm excited to play on the Switch 2. And I'm just curious what you may be looking forward to playing if the idea really does come to fruition here that Nintendo Switch 2 or whatever they end up calling it will have games that run a little bit better thanks to back and pad. So first one has to go to the Warriors games. Now in particular, I wanna talk about Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity because this was a game that made me tap in two hours. Look, as someone who does retro gaming videos, you already know I have to have a very high tolerance for just janky frame rates and poor visuals because I like playing games in their little time capsules on my CRT and so, you know, this stuff matters less to me than others out there. And I would say that applies to everything from indie devs to AAA developers when it comes to frame rate and bugs and glitches. I am a touch more lenient on that stuff, but it can definitely compound and ruin the experience for me. But in something like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, it's a time it did compound. Like, I know what a Musou-style game is, I know what it gives me, and it's why I love it. So, yeah, I was very upset when this game barely ran on my Switch, and I just kind of collected dust ever since. Meanwhile, there are other games like Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, which I did trog through because I adored the original Fire Emblem Warriors, and frankly, I'm not a big fan of Three Houses, so Three Hopes was actually something I kind of enjoyed more than Three Houses, but nonetheless, shout out to Three Hopes, decent game, but had similar problems to Age of Calamity. It was optimized a little bit better, I felt, like it ran a little bit better, looked a little bit better, but yeah, I'd have to say that Age of Calamity is in worse shape, but honestly, any Musou-style game on Switch has just been not great, to put it lightly. Now, another game that just immediately jumped to my head when this news broke was this bad boy here, Pokemon Scarlet, Pokemon Violet. I remember picking this up for review and playing like 10 hours and I had to tap out. This game is so technically broken on so many levels and just a little bit of a buff on frame rate, a little buff on draw distance could go such a long way for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And I am just, again, as you can tell here, I'm asking for the bare minimum with some of these games, but I distinctly remember reviewing this and going, wow, what has happened to Pokemon? Because like on the physical front, English cards are in terrible condition. Like you'll open fresh packs and there'll be whitened corners. It's terrible. And then you get games like this where you're like, on paper for me, this is a dream Pokemon game. Open world, you can go in any direction you want. Tons of stories, apparently the story is really good. I love the music for it. Pokemon are cute. You can just catch them right out in the open, start battles whenever, fight trainers wherever. Like, it's awesome. There's a lot of interactivity. The trade system is great. It's not overly gimmicky like some of the new features for Pokemon are actual strategy tactics being added into the combat system. Like, by and large, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet just checks all the boxes I've been looking for in this series. But because it barely works, because I can hardly stand to look at it, I've been waiting for back combat and I'm hoping that this is a game that ends up getting some sort of buff from a Switch successor but also another one which is a personal favorite of mine because the texture quality is just so bad it's Pokemon Legends Arceus I am so in love with this game because it does change the Pokemon formula in a pretty interesting way focusing all of your progression around catching Pokemon and I just really love the idea of that and I cannot wait for Legend ZA I think it's coming out sometime next year we'll see but this game as much as I do love it and how cozy it is and how many memories I already have packed into it and we've done a retrospective on it already I gotta say when it comes to Legends Arceus it is an eyesore it really is and there's just I think outside of the starting village not much pretty stuff to look at in this game, and I think that Pokemon could do a lot better, so I'm hoping that does get better in Back Combat. Another one I thought of when I was going through my collection is actually Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Uh, I, look, this game is fantastic. It is very impressive for what it pulls off on the Switch. I'll get into that in a moment. I put like 80 hours into it, beat it. Love the story. Noah's performance in this game is incredible, like some serious range. How this dude was not getting awards everywhere is beyond me but i digress we're just talking about games and how they could perform on other systems for me xenoblade chronicles 3 was a game that really looked impressive especially because it came out right before pokemon scarlet and violet so then in hindsight when scarlet and violet came out people went yo why isn't monolith making pokemon games just based on how technically sound xenoblade chronicles 3 is but again, the idea of like, hey, could we improve the texture quality in this game? Could we sharpen the image a little bit more? 
little things that make it even more of a technical achievement. I was thinking of a game like Xenoblade Chronicles 3 where it can really start to push the limits. So that excited me a ton. The idea that this already fantastic game can be much better because I haven't touched any of the DLC for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So that was one that came to mind. And another one that came to mind, you're noticing a trend here. It's fast paced action games that really struggle on the Switch. And that's Bayonetta 3. Uh, this game isn't too much up Shit's Creek without a paddle, but it's kind of like halfway there is what I would say. Uh, there's just times where it doesn't run as well as it should. And we're talking about platinum games like Bayonetta is their bread and butter. 60 FPS is especially their bread and butter. And I would love nothing more than to have this game running silky smooth on the Switch successor. It upsets me because I'm such a platinum games fanboy that I have yet to play this platinum games title like i love whatever they do i play anything they do but this one i skipped out on because the switch man it just runs me into the ground and especially i found this disappointing because there are games like astral chain which also hail from platinum games the developer and that one ran totally fine for me and it still had fast-paced action it had really great visuals like to me it's one of if not the best switch exclusive i adore that game from top to bottom so i did feel on a technical level that bayonetta 3 was a step down when it came to performance from platinum games and so that's just a quick pile of games that came to mind right away there are other ones like for example i reviewed earlier this year in tmnt splintered fate it's in that video that i called out how yeah sometimes when it's like loading in the next wave or the reward you get after a wave is done the game hitches it kind of stalls a bit that may just be the game itself or it could be the Switch, I'm not 100% sure, but there's even little things like that I'm hoping get ironed out. I know Back Compat isn't just this magic fix everything kind of trick. I threw the disc in or I threw the cartridge in and boom, it's fixed. But I am hoping for just some basic upgrades from Nintendo on some of these games. Like the idea that a next gen patch could be deployed for Pokemon Scarlet is really exciting. And I'm just curious to see how Nintendo handles Back Compat. Like this to me feels like a big deal because I'm looking back at their past systems and I love what they did with the Wii, where you had the GameCube and the Wii attached to it, and there was no big changes there, but we're in a totally different market now, right? You're seeing what PlayStation does, where they sell you like $10 remasters, and will you see Nintendo do something like that? It's a great money-making opportunity to just basically resell part of the package again, and Nintendo is certainly not allergic to money, so will they take that route, or will they do what Xbox does with smart delivery and kind of give you free next-gen optimization that you really don't think about, because the one thing we do have to say here about Nintendo unless things change in the next generation is that they're not necessarily technical wizards when it comes to certain features like I think of party chat and how they've handled that for years through an app and a, a pair of headphones and just like it, it's so ancient it's so archaic uh, I hope they get around to even something like that I hope they have an achievement system on the switch too but right now to have confirmed back compat and to have this sort of excitement out of me Number one says what you kind of expect out of Nintendo, at least in my book, but also it just shows like the potential is here for this to be massive. And I think the obvious answer when you pull yourself away from the zeitgeist and just look at it objectively, it makes a lot of sense why Nintendo would allow you to do this because we saw what happened when they tried to go Wii, Wii U, and they lost so many people on that transition. Whereas going Switch, Switch 2, allowing people to carry that library forward at the bare minimum, even if it runs the exact same, just allowing you to have that library of games. It's so important because you look at, for example, what happened with Xbox, where they always talk about how that transition from the Xbox One to the Series X was really tough for them because they obviously lost out big time between the Xbox One and the PS4 when everyone started to form their digital libraries. And we saw that happen a little bit later with Nintendo. Everyone started to form digital libraries. And so now we get to carry all of those over into a Switch successor. Although I feel like Switch is now in a really good spot where Nintendo could kind of sell us any sort of hardware and get away with it. But I'm sure they're not trusting that mindset because when you really think about it, <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, Nintendo had a massive flop with the Wii U. Nonetheless, I'm excited. These are just some games that I was thinking of that could be great with Back Compat on Switch 2. I'm looking forward to hearing your suggestions. Are there games I was missing here? Any games that came to mind for you? What do you make of this news? Let me know in this very different retro rebound style video down below. Other than that, take excellent care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next much more normal retro rebound. Peace out.